Heather Hawkins, and this is a beginner's guide to hand lettering and how to take it digital. When I started hand lettering, I pretty much taught myself. So here are a few things that I wish I knew when I first started. Number one, choosing the right materials. It's really handy to have some quality pens like these Tombos with one thick end and one thin. I've also got a few of these Japanese pens that I picked up from Ekazu's Art and Craft, which have a great thickness. I also still really love using watercolor paintbrushes and paints on a nice smooth paper to create some great effects. Number two, thicker down strokes and thinner up strokes. This is super helpful. So as you can see here with my arrows, when the pen is going down, use more pressure to create a thicker stroke. And when the pen is coming up, you take the pressure off a little bit so you get that nice thin stroke. Number three, it's helpful to use a grid to practice your letters. Just like the old saying goes, practice makes perfect. And there's no exception with hand lettering. Using a grid helps you with the consistency of the size, shape and direction of the letters. Once you get a feel of hand lettering, you can play around with using different pens and paints to see what you like and what you don't like. You can also use a combination of thicknesses to get a great effect. Number four, take your hand off the paper between strokes. As you can see here, I'm using different color pens to show you where I take my hand off between each stroke. This also helps you to slow down when doing your hand lettering and think about what stroke's coming next. Most videos that you see of hand lettering are sped up, including this one. But in reality, hand lettering happens very slowly and carefully. Number five, use pencil to mark up your page. Here I'm writing a name and address on an envelope so I can't make any mistakes with the pen. So firstly, I've used lead pencil to mark up the name and address. This allows me to rub it out if I make a mistake and make sure the placement and the letters are perfect before I begin. Now I'm going to show you how to take your artwork digital. And by that, I mean how to get it from the paper onto the computer. For this particular job, I'm doing wedding menus. My client wants one large scale menu on an easel, which I'm using the watercolor version of my menu heading. But she also wants smaller menus on the table for each guest. And for these, she wants the menu heading in gold foil. To do this, we're going to have to scan this in and take it into Illustrator. Use the pen tool to go around the outline of the font and create a vector object, which I can then insert into my InDesign file and send it to the printer. So let's get started. Firstly, place your artwork into an Illustrator document. Lock that layer and then create another one on top, which you'll then use to create your pen tool artwork. Select the pen tool and use a black outline as you carefully trace around the outside of your hand lettering. Repeat until you trace around the entire word. Once you've traced around the entire word and closed the object, you can go back and tidy little things up. You want to make sure it looks nice and smooth and consistent. And finally, don't forget to erase the small hole in the E. To do this, fill both shapes with colour and then use the Pathfinder tool to erase a small shape from the larger object. Don't forget to save your document. And voila, you've created a vector object of your hand lettering. Thank you so much for listening and I hope these tips have helped.